Hi, my name is Jake Vossenkemper, agronomy lead with Liquor Grow. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, sales and marketing with Liquor Grow. Jake, we're out here in a bean field, but it's also the middle of fungicide season, or it's starting to get to be. Um, can we talk about fungicide on soybeans? We always talk about corn. Yeah, it's about time we talk about soybeans, Katie. Thanks for the opportunity. Although some would say beans are weed, plants more corn. I've right? never said that. I like soybeans. <laughs> so, Jake, uh, if you think about a corn plant, we want to protect from the ear leaf on up, and that's where we get our yield from. But if you think about your soybean plant, we want to... T we want to protect the entire plant. It is the factory that creates all these pods. We can save all that for another um, time or ask the Liquor Grow sales rep. They'll be able to share that information with you. Um, so let's talk about fungicide and when's the best time. Yeah, absolutely, Katie. The one thing that I wanted to focus on today is when do you apply your fungicide, okay? I think it's, I know it's really important, okay? In addition, when I talk to farmers and even some ag retail salesmen, there's some nervousness about how do you identify what grow stage R3 is, and frankly, it is a little bit confusing, okay? So I wanna walk through that today and then follow it up with a couple other important points. So the way you identify growth stage R3 is the first thing you're looking for is the main stem. So in soybeans, you can have some branch stems. So the first thing you wanna do is identify what the main stem looks like. Then you wanna focus on the four uppermost nodes in that main stem, okay? You would start by counting the last leaf that is a true trifoliate and it's open. And so the leaves are not touching. And so the leaves are not touching. So with, with this trifoliate leaves, the leaves are not touching. This trifoliate that's just emerging, they definitely are touching. So you'd start right here with node number one, right there where the leaf, trifoliate leaf meets the main stem. This would be node number two, node number three, and node number four. And by gosh, on node number four, there is a pod that's at least 3 sixteenths of an inch long. So by definition, this soybean plant is R3. Sure. And 3 sixteenths of an inch is not very long. So It's also five millimeters for all of you metric folks. Absolutely. So because 3 sixteenths of an inch is not very long, oftentimes when I'm asked to go look at a soybean field and I'm asked, is this R3? 90% of the time, it's past R3. Maybe it's even R4, okay? And how long does R3 last, Jake? And that's the thing, Katie. It only lasts about 10 days, plus or minus a few days, based on planting date maturity so and temperatures. So need to be out here now spraying these beans. Well, these beans are ready, yes. And, you know, it's, it, is, it is an important growth stage. I've, I look at lots of information, and university study after university study after university study indicates that R3 is the most important time. R3 is the beginning of the critical period. It's the beginning of the seed determination phase. And you wanna lay that fungicide down and get that residual out three or four weeks so you can protect that phase where seed number is determined. That's the most important phase in soybean uh, is the seed number determination phase. Great. Um, Jake, when we are been out looking at this field today, we're seeing a lot of this uh, chewing on these top leaves. What, how important is it to have an insecticide in with this? Yeah, Katie, this, this is not a long video, so it's hard to get into the weeds, but it is important. We often see an additional yield increase when we include an insecticide with that fungicide application. The insects that I'm most worried about are uh, uh, bean leaf beetle, bean leaf beetle um, which vector, not only do bean leaf beetles chew on the pods themselves and chew up leaf area physically, they also vector something called bean pod model virus. Which is quite a tongue twister. It's quite a tongue, tongue twister, but bean pod model virus is a hidden yield robber, just like soybean cyst nematodes. Jake's favorite thing to talk about. Abs yeah, I love I soybean cyst nematodes. It's video. another important uh, pathogen of soybean, but you know, Iowa State, not too many years ago, did a survey in the state of Iowa, and if, if, if memory serves me right, up to 60% of the soybean fields in the state of Iowa were actually infected with bean pod model virus. So it's a bunch of fields. So by adding an insecticide, we can knock out that first generation and... That's right, Katie. You know, you might come out here and say, oh, there's not that many stink bugs, there's not that many bean leaf beetles, and that's true, there's not that many. The problem is they both lay eggs, and they're gonna have one or two more generations. So one bean leaf beetle could turn into 10 or 12 bean leaf beetles by the end of the season pretty quickly. Sure. So you kind of want to cut the snake off at the head now and don't let that population get out of control. Great. Well, we better get these folks um, back to their spray rigs and let them get their beans sprayed, don't you, you think? You bet. And if you happen to check out our YouTube channel, you'll notice that we just dropped a new video. It's our agronomy and business update, midsummer update. So hope you can check that out. Thanks. Have a nice day.